Hey everybody, my name is Mike Hagen with Visual Adventures. I want to show you today how to use the i1 Studio to calibrate paper and printer together so that you can produce some great prints on your own. Let me go ahead and get started, show you how the software works, and then show you the process for using these types of tools, these printer swatches, for calibrating your, your paper and printer combination. Starting out, we've got the i1 Studio. This is a great product and it allows you to calibrate a variety of different visual media. One of the first things that you can do is of course calibrate a printer and that's the whole purpose of this video, but you can also use it to calibrate a projector or a scanner. Finally, you can use it to calibrate your monitors, profile your monitors, and uh, I have another video showing you how to do that as well. The i1 Studio has four different measurement positions. The top measurement position is for measuring ambient light. You'll use that when you're working in your office. You set it there, it measures the ambient light and changes the brightness of your monitor depending on how bright your room is. This setting here is for measuring your projector. This third setting here is for calibration. And when I say calibration, I mean calibrating the i1 Studio itself. And then the last setting down here is for all of the measurement work. In fact, we're going to be spending time there today measuring these printer profiles or measuring the printer color swatches. I'm going to start here with the software. The software, after you've installed it, lives up here in your system tray. I'm going to go ahead and click on the i1 Studio icon and go ahead and launch the i1 Studio interface. Now I have this interface over here on this display. Uh, you can move it to either of your displays, but this is my calibrated display. And uh, for, the, for the sake of measuring your printer, it doesn't matter what display the software is located on because this is an out of display calibration. In other, in other words, it's just measuring the printer itself and the paper itself. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here. You'll see there are six different workflows that you can choose from. I'm going to go ahead and choose the color print workflow. I'll click on that. And as I open this up, you'll see that this here, I'm defining what the printer is. So today I'll be using the Canon Pro 100 inkjet printer. The paper size I'll be using is eight and a half by 11. And again, I would just want to point out that there are lots of different options for paper sizes. So let's say that you've got some 13 by 19 or you've got some 17 by 22 paper from a different manufacturer. You want to profile those. Those options are probably already located in there. So we'll do the eight and a half by 11. The unit is of course in inches. And then the last thing is the paper description. You want to write something descriptive about the paper. Now I have some paper over here that I'll be profiling today. Uh, this is a, a paper that I've had for a long time. It's made by a different manufacturer. It's made by Hewlett Packard. So I'm going to profile my HP paper on my Canon printer. Now I've already, cre I've already created a profile for what is the so the, the Canon paper, the Canon Luster. And this is the paper that came, of course, with the printer and is a very common paper to use, by the way. So now I have a profile specifically for this paper and that printer. Today, though, I will be using the HP paper. So I'm just going to write down here on the description, I'm going to write down HP photo paper glossy. Okay. So I'll just go HP photo paper glossy. In fact, it won't allow me to put all that text in. So I'm just going to short, shorten that and just go HP glossy. There we go. The last little checkbox here is to data save your workflow. And you're just, you'll use that if you have to come back again in the future to, you know, if you have to pause this process midway, you can click that and you can come right back into it in the future. So the first thing is, is we're going to go ahead and click print here. I'm going to load the paper and then it will print out these color swatches on this new paper. I'll just load a couple of sheets because there's probably uh, three or four different things that I'll be doing with the printer today. Go ahead and load that in here in the standard paper tray. And we're good. I've got the printer. It's turned on. Looks like everything is connected. By the way, I am connected with USB today. So this works the same as if you're working with USB or with uh, wireless. 
I'm go going to go ahead and click print. Now I'm going to choose the Canon Pro 100 and go ahead and click print from there. Now it's thinking, right? You can see the LED on the front is blinking and it'll take maybe just another 30 seconds or so until that paper comes out. All right, the swatch is done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the i1 Studio to run across these swatches, which will then give the i1 Studio software uh, the appropriate data to modify and uh, update the color profile for the printer. Let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm just going to set it here on my desk and prepare it to work. And as I, before I do that though, I have to go ahead and click next on my software up on the screen. So we'll go ahead and click next. Now it says it wants to calibrate the i1 studio itself. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this dial to calibration mode. There we go. Now I click up on the screen. I cl click calibrate. It takes about, I don't know, 15 seconds or so. Now the device is calibrated. Now it says to turn the measurement system down to measure. There we go. We're good. Now you can see up here on the screen, it's telling me to measure column one on page one. So let me go through that process. When you start out, you want this line, this little LED indicator to live on the white portion of the paper. We set it like that. And then I'm not gonna do this quite yet, but when you finish, you wanna run across here and you wanna finish it so that the white portion has gone beyond, beyond the last color swatch, but not off the paper. Finally, there's these buttons here on either side. I'm going to push and hold that button in right as I start, and then I'm going to move it across the paper. So here we go. I'll start down here. I push the button down. I then move it across the first strip and then let go. And then up here on the monitor, up on my software, it says now move to swatch number two. So we'll do that. I'll now go over to swatch number two, same process, run across and in, let go. And you, you'll hear your computer system beeping when you finish that swatch. Here's swatch number three. Good, and now swatch number four. And finally, swatch number five. Great, now I'm done. Now I look over here on the computer monitor and it says measurement of first set is completed. And now click the next button to continue. I also wanna point out as I'm doing this, that down here I can see where I'm at in the overall workflow. I'm, I'm on step two of the process, I'm on the measurement process. So now we'll go click the next button. So now we're going to print the second profiling test chart. It's already taken its first set of measurements and now it's going to print another one out uh, with slightly different colors. So we're, it looks like we're good to go. I will click print. Just make sure the right printer is chosen and it is. I click print. And now it will print the second test chart. The second color chart is now finished and you can see the colors on that are different than the first one. Uh, it's just a different gamut, a different group of colors for it, for the system to understand. So let's go ahead and start measuring that now. Same process as before. And we'll bring this over here, set it there. And before I start, I'm going to click next on my software. Now it's asking me to go ahead and run the measurement. With the second set of measurements done, I'm ready to go back to the software 
It says it's successfully completed the measurement. We'll go ahead and click next. You can see in the workflow, I'm actually through four out of five steps. Now I click next here. Now we come to the point where we need to name and save that profile. As always, I recommend that you name it in a way that makes sense to you. There's no science to naming your profiles. You just need to make sure that you can refer back to them later when you're using your software like Lightroom or Photoshop or Capture One. You want to be able to say, oh, I get it. That's this, you know, HP paper for my Canon Pro 100 printer. So right here, the default is Canon Pro 100 HP Glossy, and then there's a date and time stamp on there. I'm happy with all of that. I'm going to choose the most recent version, you know, version number four, and now I go ahead and I click Save Profile. Now the generate is generating that profile. It should take a few seconds. Now it's done. It says the profile Canon Pro 100 HP Glossy with the date and time was created. I go ahead and click OK. And now I have successfully created that profile. So what do you do with that profile? Where does it live? How do you use it? Well, that's what I want to show you next. So I'm going to do that with Lightroom and we'll actually make a print using this new paper profile uh, using a wildlife photo that I've recently taken. I'm in Lightroom now and I'm going to print out Let's print out this seal photo here. Took this photo in Iceland. Let's just see how those blues come out on my new Canon inkjet printer. I've already worked on the image. Uh, I'm, using, I'm looking at that on my calibrated monitor. And to me, it's feeling like it's a little bit dark. So I am going to go ahead and make a quick change here to its overall brightness. I'm going to add some exposure, just a bit of exposure to get it to about the brightness I think is right. Now remember, this is a calibrated monitor. And so the fact that it is calibrated should be giving me a very good feel for what this image is gonna look like when I print it out. I'll go ahead and go over here to the print module. There we are in the print module. And I'm gonna print a single image. I'm just gonna go down here, check the page setup and make sure that it's using the right printer, and it is as well as the right paper. I'm just going to make a small print today on eight and a half by 11 paper. So I click OK. Now we'll go over here and I'll just run through my settings and make sure my margins are good. My page grid is good. My cell size is at eight and a half by 11. I'm happy with that. Now we go down to my print job and I'm going to print to a printer. I know that sounds obvious, but there's another option to print to a JPEG file. Today I'm going to print to the, uh, the Canon Pro 100. 16-bit output, yes. And now this is the important part. Let's talk about the paper that we're going to use. Now we just spent all this time profiling the printer with the new HP glossy paper. So I wanna make sure that I choose that in the, in the profile option inside of Lightroom. You'll do the same thing when you use Photoshop, the same thing when you use Capture One Pro or any other software that you're printing from. So I'll do that now. I go ahead and click here on the screen and you'll see that I've got the Canon Pro 100 default paper. That's the paper that came with the printer. I don't wanna use that one. I wanna use the profile that we've just created today and that's right here, the Canon Pro 100 HP Glossy. That's the profile we just created a few minutes ago. I go ahead and click OK. And now I make sure that one is selected and it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and click print and we'll get our nice, beautiful seal photo from our printer. So there it is, our nice print with our new profile with our HP paper on a Canon inkjet printer. It's great. Let me show you another photo that I did today. Shot this one, or I shot this one here in Maui and printed it off on the printer this morning. This is using the Canon paper as well. I hope this tutorial is helpful to you as you learn to profile your own paper and printer. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me at my website, Visual Adventures. It's actually www.visadventures.com. I'm happy to help. Have a great day.